do some deep breathing. Hello everyone over there, good evening to all of you. You are now watching the MMFF webinar number two, the Regional Film Festivals Go Online. Are we all ready? <laughs> okay, I'm Yao, I'm the uh, moderator for tonight. Uh, you are watching the webinar brought to you by Mini Film Festival, the longest running short film festival in Malaysia in collaboration with Sea Short Film Festival, the festival that focuses on Southeast Asian short film. So uh, tonight, we have five panelists with us. Uh, without further ado, let's uh, welcome all of them. Uh, let's stop this. <laughs> okay, so you'll be able to see uh, all the panelists online and uh, in front of your screen. So over my screen, I see Tidy uh, at the top. Uh, he's actually from Myanmar. Uh, and uh, we have Jude Day, okay, uh, from Sabah. And I have Nicholas uh, from Singapore uh, representing Sea Shots, and Sanchai uh, from Thailand representing Thai Short Film and Video Festival, and Anita from Indonesia representing uh, FFD, Festival Film Documenter. So I will pass the mic to every panelist to introduce briefly about yourself and uh, the festival that you are organizing. Okay, so maybe we can start with the uh, furthest north from Myanmar, Taidi. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Taidi from Myanmar. I'm running the film festival called What Time Film Festival, uh, short film festival from Myanmar. Yes. Yeah, I, so as I know this, your 10th year. Yes, uh, this year will be our 10th edition of uh, our festival. Yes. Oh, yeah. So at the same time, it's also the 100th century of uh, yes. Myanmar cinema. Yes, this year we are planning for like 10 years uh, celebrating our festival and then 100 years of uh, Bami cinema, Myanmar cinema. Oh, wow, that's marvelous. <laughs> so welcome on board, Tidy. <laughs> okay, next to Tidy, we have the nearest country to Myanmar, uh, Thailand. So maybe we can have San Chai to introduce himself and also the festival that he involved in. I am San Chai from uh, Thailand. Hi, San Chai. <laughs> I, 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 I organized the Thai Short Film Festival. This year is going to be our 24th edition. Really long. And yes, yeah, longer, we, yes. yeah, uh, yeah, even in Thailand, we are the longest still running film festival in Thailand. Surprisingly, yeah. we focus on short, but it's glowing and glowing. And yeah, that that's uh, our festival is. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, apart from uh, Thai short film and video festival, uh, yeah. Sancha actually worked in uh, the Thai oh, yeah. film archive. Yes, uh, yes. And um, also Thai, uh, well, another festival that you also work in, right? I, I, yeah, it is part of the Thai film archive. It's a th silent film festival. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so he has a very uh, great background over there. So we can talk to him further after this. Yeah. And after Thailand, we have also the southest of Southeast Asia. So we can have Anita now. Let's ask Anita to introduce herself. Hi, Anita. Hi, hello. Uh, I'm Anita uh, from uh, Festival Film Documenter. Uh, and this year, uh, we're going to have our 19th uh, uh, edition. Oh. It's your 19th edition. Yes. Oh, it's, wow! It's quite long. It's a long history there. 
Okay, thank you, Anita. So that is the festival film documental uh, from Jogja, Indonesia. So the next one we could have uh, Jude, uh, the furthest uh, maybe uh, west in Malaysia. <laughs> so Jude, can you talk about your festival and yourself? Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Jude, and uh, I organise the KKIFF Kota Kinabalu International Film Festival. We uh, celebrated our 10th anniversary last year, which was a lot of fun. And so we're having our 11th uh, festival this year. Mm, great to have you on board. So thank you, Jude. And Jude is actually from New Zealand. She has been traveling to many, many countries before she decided to stay in Sabah. And she has been there for 13 years. So now it's already 11 years that she uh, co-founded, she founded and uh, she organized KKIFF over there. So the last panelist, we had Nicholas, actually the core director of C Shots. Uh, let him introduce about himself and also C Shots. Please. Can, can you open your mic? Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, thank you for joining us. I'm so nervous because, uh, yeah, you know, like C Shot is only three years old. I mean, this is our fourth year. Uh, I just joined the festival. Uh, last year as a partnerships director um, and this year I'm co-directing with uh, Trimui mm -hmm. and suddenly I find myself in this um, unique situation where um, <laughs> COVID is huge around the world but um, nonetheless we think we want to continue so I think uh, we will share more about it so I like I so much to learn from every one of you you know like we are just like mm. three. We're like a baby. So I, I let you guys do most of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I believe everyone have their voice to uh, voice up about the festival. Uh, so uh, in the in the house, we also have Lao. Uh, he's actually uh, one of our students uh, and, and he's helping on the technical side of the streaming. So uh, back to the slides. So actually, uh, we are very honored to have uh, five panelists uh, representing most the most vibrant film festival in the Southeast Asia from Myanmar, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, and Indonesia. So without further ado, uh, let's ask these very questions. Uh, are we really going online? Are we all going online? I and mean, you know, I mean, these five panelists. Uh, just before them revealing the answer, are they going online entirely or not? I would like to hear from our audience. Okay, so uh, to our dear audience, if you are online now, if you are online now, uh, could you please also let just participate in this uh, quick survey? Uh, so you can actually go on with this website, www.wooclap.com slash MFF web, webinar actually, web2, or using this QR code. So we'll have like 30 seconds to wait for you or one minute to wait for you to for your response. So quickly. Uh, it's actually a challenging time because uh, most of the festival, either they are deciding going online or they might not be going online for certain reasons. And uh, what are the reasons behind this? So we are going to hear from them afterwards. Uh, so. Are we all really going online entirely? And what kind of consequences and factors they have to consider afterwards? So those are the topics that we are going to talk about uh, tonight. All right, so basically we have quite a number of participants on already. Uh, yeah, keep coming. We are waiting for you to join this, uh, to, to, to give us a very quick feedback. And join us for the fun. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like lottery, you know, lottery when they announce the result online or, you know, in front of the TV. <laughs> so our question, so I believe we have about 30 plus audience uh, already on, on this, uh, uh, ready to answer. So I will review the questions. In light of COVID-19, which platform would you prefer as an audience of film festival? Okay, online, on site, or both are fine for you. So the contact is, COVID-19. So you, you should know COVID-19 has already claimed so much life around the world, at least now 460,000 lives uh, throughout the world. So what is your response? 
Okay, so in this kind of condition, are you preferring online festival, on-site festival, or both are fine for you? All right, so let's see what is your responses. And you can actually log in here, wooclab.com slash MFF web two. So to let us know your results. So at the moment we have about 48, uh, near to 50 people already registered, I mean, coming into this site. And wow, it's interesting to see about half of you would are okay with both uh, conditions, either online or on site. And about one third of you are deciding to choose for online. So very little of you, five of you, like is choosing on-site physical festival. Interesting, interesting. So maybe I give you another 10 seconds if you would like to decide now. So decide faster. <laughs> okay, five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, so I believe uh, basically our majority of the audience are okay for both, even in the condition of COVID-19. They are okay with online or on-site. Uh, either are possible for them. And at least one third of the audience are choosing online, probably because of the COVID-19 situations. And five audience out of the 50, uh, 40 who decided, who had already made their choice, still persist with the on-site physical festival. Okay, no problem. Whatever choice that you are in, let's listen from our panelists. Okay, so uh, yeah, may I have a quick response from all of you, uh, the, the, the panelists, what kind of uh, festival that you are going to organize this year? Anyone would like to start with? Okay, Sanchai, I think you are ready since you open your mind. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, my festival is still, we still keep to do the physical festival. It's mm. not going to be on site, but mm. we'll think about because of the travel restriction. So it might be uh, impossible for the filmmaker to get it or the, the curator or programmer. So we might, we might have some online discussion as mm. well. So it's going to be both mixed between online and on-site for the My Festival, okay. which is like, of course, we because it's not happened yet, the festival is at the end of this year. So you don't, we don't know that what is happened in that time, maybe going to change it, it look, uh, according to the situation, of course. Yeah. Yes. So really, nobody knows what kind of uh, situation will be in yeah. the December, right? Yes. So uh, basically, uh, Thai short film festival will be going on uh, on site. Site, yeah. And a little bit of online activities like webinars. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sanchai. How about you, Jude? Since you have already turned on your mic. <laughs> yep. Well, we're going online. All right, fully online. Yes. Um, the activities that that we feel um. Well, for a lot of reasons, we'll talk about them later. But um, the training programs, the Saba Film Academy, the Saba Pitching Training and Awards, actually also the Saba the filmmakers competition and the and the uh, meetings, we'll all postpone them till next year for a mm. variety of reasons. But the movies will be screening online. All right, all right. So you will have your screening and fully going online. Thank you, uh, yep. Jude from KKIFF. And how about the next? Anyone would like to go on with? Just turn on your mic and say something. All right, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, FFD this year, we uh, consider for uh, online festival, although uh, we also uh, see, we will see the uh, possibility of uh, uh, physical uh, event uh, maybe uh, in uh, a few programs, but uh, we, we we really still see the uh, situation uh, because uh, right now we cannot uh, really predict the situation in Indonesia. From yesterday, we have uh, more than a uh, thousand cases uh, like increasing. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe there will be like a second wave or we, we still don't know. It's very uncertain mm -hmm. here. So we... Mm -hmm. uh, uh we really try to do it online this year yeah all right thank you thank you anita so uh it seems like ffd in indonesia is going to be 
online and partially physical at the same time. So it's partially online and partially uh, uh, on site at the same time. And uh, as Riley pointed out, Indonesia is actually is one of the is the top uh, is the highest uh, COVID nineteen number in Southeast Asia with at least 55,000 of uh, infected patients at the moment and followed by Singapore and uh, independently uh, in uh, the, this Southeast Asian panelists and Singapore and Malaysia 8,000 plus, Singapore is like 40 plus thousands and uh, Thailand about 3,000 plus and the, le the least is actually Myanmar about 300. Us. So we are left with another two. So either of you, uh, Nicholas or Tidy, would like to speak? Yes, uh, yeah. maybe I can I can start. Yes, uh, our festival uh, is in October, so we still don't know. As you mentioned, like uh, the situation, it seems a bit controlled in Myanmar, mm. and but like uh, the the government extend all the the restriction uh, till uh, July 15. So like um, th there's no foreign flight coming in and so on. And so, the, and then we, we still don't have any uh, proper instruction from the government, no mm -hmm. shootings, no cinema open yet, no filming open, uh, happening yet. So we are starting to prepare for part, partly online and then mm -hmm. like partly uh, physical. Mm -hmm. uh, for physical, like uh, we are thinking about if it is difficult to do in cinema, we're we'll thinking about like outdoor screening with like a social distancing and so on. And then uh, some of it will be go online, uh, which is mm. also good for us to reach out uh, the bigger, the other area of Myanmar ethnic area. And then we don't have much to worry about the censorship also on online. So mm. that's what we are uh, trying mix okay so in other words you are prioritizing physical on-site festival and fit in a little bit of uh, some online uh, activities uh, with your filmmakers and audience yes yeah. yeah, some screening also we will we have we'll do the online so I to, see. Skip the, to skip the censorship and then yes Great. it sounds like 10 years so we want to meet and drink so like a physical <laughs> also. I, I love the, your reasons by skipping the censorship. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tidy, for Myanmar uh, yeah. for uh, representing Watan Film Festival. And last but not least, uh, the baby in the house, Sea Shot. <laughs> so can we have Nicholas to tell us about uh, the decisions of Sea uh, Shot? Okay, so um, I think the 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 decision was really hard, and also because Sea Shot is a quite a unique um, short film festival. It's it's the one that the only one that I know of personally that uh, holds it holds the festival in a different city every mm. year, mm. which already presents tremendous amount of logistics um, issues, yes. right? So first year was in uh, KL and then it went to Penang and then last year it was at Malacca and uh, we've actually announced this year to be at Ipo, mm. and um, but because now the team is like half the team is based in Malaysia, half the team is based in Singapore, uh, mm -hmm. the core team. And and already the the coordination is already very tough. But um, when we were, had to make the, the, the decision somewhere in April, um, I think we actually asked the filmmakers who submitted, are they okay if you do an online edition? Because what we did was we, we uh, had a call for entries in April 1st, the whole month. And then at the end, we actually asked them if they're okay. And most of them are actually fine. I think the, the, mm. situ the, the, the situation in the region is such that, I mean, even if you want to go, um, airports are not open. Yeah, you know, so um, yeah, so we decided to go online and, and um, yeah. Mm. Uh, one of the things that the filmmakers actually said was that they are very interested in the speaking and 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 corresponding and having a lot of this um, seminars and and whatnot interactions, mm -hmm. which I actually think that because now we are online, more people can actually uh, get involved, participate, and attend. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's a, a blessing in disguise. But um, I think we we will talk about the rest of the issues afterwards. So oh, right. uh, yeah, we are going online. The dates are the same. Um, we are actually thinking of extending because we suddenly have a few more things we want to add in. So yeah, online. I see. Okay. So as already heard from 
our panelist, uh, Nicholas, as you can see from the uh, graphics uh, on your screens, basically Thai, Watan and uh, FFD will be partially online or partially on site. And meanwhile, KKIFF and c -shot will be fully online. So it's like three versus two at the same time. And for your information, the festival that I'm programming right now, a mini film festival uh, organized by students and colleagues in uh, my campus will be fully online as well this year. So it's like three versus three. <laughs> so it's actually an interesting issue to look into. So uh, let's move on from here. Right, COVID-19 and on-site event SOP. Does, uh, do these two situations, uh, like the seriousness of COVID-19 in your country and the, uh, your government, I believe, had already released or somehow recently released the on-site event SOP, right? So have these two situations informed or shaped the way you decide uh, on which platform to go into, online or on-site? Maybe any one of you could start with and talk about this? Uh, since my mic is on, <laughs> off. Oh, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> but uh, I think... Um... It's a, I believe it's a lot stricter in Singapore, but of course, we're supposed to do it in Malaysia. Uh, yeah. We've sort of reopened here, but it is still about five, still single-digit groups. Um, mm. Cinemas are still not open. I believe in Malaysia, it's also not open yet. So yeah. um, we really care about not just the festival running, but the people who attend the festival. Because mm. I think once you attend a film festival, everybody knows that everyone becomes friends, becomes like family. And the last thing we want is to for, is, is to basically for someone to uh, fall sick. So, yeah. so it's not just because the government is strict or some governments are not as strict, but I think for the welfare of everybody, um, mm. it's just very logical. Yeah. All right. So that's the reason because of the seriousness brought by COVID-19. Uh, at, at the day that we, we tell the immunity towards uh, COVID-19, so it's very impossible to do it physically for you. Okay, how about the rest, like Jude or Sanchai or any one of you, Tidy or Anita? <laughs> Let me uh, come in because um, still Malaysia close to Singapore. Um, yeah. we, we just needed to make our decision in about May, mm. so we didn't know uh, mm. whether the, when the cinemas would open, mm. uh, but we wanted to move ahead with the whole thing. And then there was the issue of censorship and how much time we needed to put our films in for censorship if we did it in the cinema. Mm. So uh, there was, and the another issue was um, uh, funding, trying right. to get funding from various. I mean, government changes are one thing. Finas is our, our National Film Commission. Um, it had changes of personnel. I mean, there were just changes all over the place, not to mention that people were simply not at work. I mean, you know, how could you go and see them? So, uh, so because of the time frame for censorship, because of the, the uh, funding, yeah, um, and also... Um, regarding all the workshops and stuff where we hold, would people be able to come mm. uh, our festivals in September? Would they want to come? Could we afford airfares? I mean, if airfares really do increase by the amount mm. that people say, mm. uh, you know, we bring a lot of people into our festival uh, participants as well as mentors. So mm. it really, um, and that's why we've postponed all our events, apart from the cinema screenings, to next mm. year. Um, Fully understand. And yes, and you know, you uh, somehow you reach a point where you need to move forward. You need to feel that you're at still planning your festival. And mm. how long can you wait for yes. cinemas to stay? And how long yes. can you wait to know whether you're going to? for censorship and so on. And it is a great relief, <laughs> um, as um, Tidy said, yeah, you don't have to worry about censorship when you do it online. <laughs> so, yes. That's actually really nice. So yes. mm -hmm. so those that were, it, it, it was partly COVID-19, partly the SOPs, but more, it was more to do with just the general organisational things of the festival as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say in the age of uncertainty, the only way 
to overcome this uncertainty is to somehow play around with certainty. Like going online is a certainty things that you can manage, right? I understand from what you have said. <laughs> Yeah, and I have to say it's really exciting for us. And another thing was, it, who was it? Was it um, Tidy that said, being online means you can reach out. You can reach out much further. Yeah, Nicola. Uh, you yeah. know, even we can reach to KL, you know, mm. which uh, you know, we can't do in a in a face-to-face -face festival. So there are pluses. It's an exciting venture for us. But mm. I'm not sure that we want it to be like this every year. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Fully understand. So there are so much opportunity and uh, possibility to explore when you go online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thanks, thanks for Jude for the sharing. How about the rest, like uh, Sunshine, Anita, and Tidy? I was called up first, so <laughs> gonna be oh. next. Uh, yeah, I, I, we this, we I said tell you before that because we are in December, so we don't know what's going on there. But now Thailand is already open. The mm. we, city the mouth so open, theater open. Uh, they just have some SOP for the theater that you have to keep the distance, uh, one minute, uh, from the other uh, audience kind of thing. So, and now even in the film archive, we also have the theater and there is screening, we also already open. So that's why we still keep uh, do it on site. And we think about the cinematic experience and we want to bring back the people to the cinema because now when uh, you see they have a poll, some poll in Thailand that even the cinema opens, people still afraid of to go to cinema. True. And it's as a film archive, we think like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is quite not good, no, not a good, uh, good way to so we, we just open the opportunity to like okay cinema experience is something that we cannot miss out and yeah. you can so replace with netflix yeah <laughs> i don't want to say that so <laughs> yeah yeah but but i mean yeah online have some benefit for that but on site also have some something that online cannot repair mm. and uh yeah, for the silent film festival, that's another film festival that we plan now. Mm. I can share it because mm. we also want to do the on 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 site. But mm. every screening, we are gonna have the live accompany from oh, the yes, yes. you know. And normally, we bring out uh, the foreign accompany. So we are gonna do like experimental. We we gonna ask the accompany play in that country, but the south come to the festival. So oh my god mixing between, yeah the kind of thing that we are thinking about as well i mean this is a yeah covid 19 is the time that we can experiment a lot of things and it means not work or maybe it's work but that's kind of thing that we we want to challenge themselves and experimenting on okay great great well, i would love to know when will be the silent film festival so that i can you know stream and watch it online to experience <laughs> how you stream the music because I believe there will be some kind of lagging when you stream it, right? So the live music will be a little bit later than the screen yeah, that we are watching or something true. like that. So we, we need to find a platform and thing like that to serve our experiment <laughs> now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, we're still talking about that uh, possibility to do that because uh, we want to make it happen. It's, it's a way that we, we can experiment nowadays. Yeah. Mm, even With provide an extra screen showing the musician playing yeah. the music, you know, yeah. so it, the, the the audience will be watching the film and another small screen showing the musician <laughs> playing the music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's not normally that we do that because they come to, they came to Thailand and play yeah. in front in of front. the theater, so True. the people can look at both of them and things like that. So yeah, yeah. Very great input from you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sanchai. Thank you, Sanchai. How about you? Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say the name, so you just volunteer to come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be a teacher, you know. <laughs> Either of you, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Um, the, the online has uh, so many advantages, as we all mentioned, like, you know, the, the censorship and then the, the reach out also, like, it can be more. And in Myanmar, it's like internet is a little bit um, issue. Mm. Mm. 
Absolutely. that like uh, we don't have much we are only depending mostly on the the mobile like mm. uh, internet mm. but, like it was reaching quite a lot in the different area and ethnic area so which is good so people can watch from different area with mobile they can watch films and so on but as uh, sunshine mentioned like um the big screen with the sound system is also a different experience for the cinema like especially on independent films and you uh, the, the filmmakers are trying to tell with audio visual with the higher quality and uh, of course like in 10 year we also want to meet each other and then you know like uh, to experience so the outside uh, the outdoor screening with like a distance which mm -hmm. could be better for us uh, i think uh, to do some of the screening outside and some of them online and then discussion most of the discussion will be online Mm, mm. Yes. Great, great. So the situation somehow in Myanmar uh, put you in this uh, decision yeah. of wanting to do it online and at the same time uh, on site to have the physical interaction among the filmmakers. Yes. Okay, great, great. Thank you, Tidy. Yeah, last but not least, uh, FFD, Anita. Ah, yes. Okay, uh, so uh, about the SOP. Uh, mm. Around two weeks ago, the government released uh, SOP uh, for this like new normal policy. Mm. Uh, but in the other hand, in last uh, a week, every day, uh, the cases increased like uh, more than thousand. So it's oh, wow. uh, kind of irony. Mm. Uh, uh, online and a physical uh, uh, festival or event, uh, uh, for sure there is a benefit or uh, the uh, the lack of uh, experience mm -hmm. uh, in in both uh, side, uh, but in the other hand, uh, the health of uh, the people and the uh, mm -hmm. team members uh, are mm -hmm. our priority. Mm -hmm. So sure. that's why uh, the uh, uh, we have uh, uh, this concern and uh, give priority to the online platform for now. Mm, true, because I, I remember I joined FFD like two years ago and then I, I volunteered as one of the uh, staff to help out during FFD. And I, I believe FFD is very, very much independent by nature and uh, I enjoy being there uh, compared to another film festival which organized around the same time in Indonesia, Jogja. <laughs> Oops. Uh, and I, because the atmosphere is very much indie and you can feel how close the staff, uh, the, the, the festival staff, they are, they are like friends and family who really work together and collaborate and help each other, even doing some massage, helping each <laughs> other to, re to reduce the stress, for instance. I really enjoy to be there. So the concern of the, the well-being of your audience and also your staff, I, I believe is the priorities of the festival itself. Thank you, thank you. So uh, now let's uh, do another uh, view from the interactions since we have been talking quite uh, some minutes already. So we would like to hear from our, our audience. Uh, you can also, I mean, put in this. We have another question for you. Uh, we want you to now imagine yourself as a filmmaker. Okay, so imagine yourself, you are a filmmaker about to submit your film to the festival. All right. And when you are about to know that this festival is going to organize a festival online, okay, what will be the considerations? Okay, so are you ready? Our audience out there? Okay, so this will be the question. Okay, should you are submitting your film to film festival, how important are the following factors to you? So you, you, you can actually allocate marks or points towards the factors below. Uh, you can put the highest point for your top priority. So out of 100, so for example, if you think piracy is a big issue for you, so you can put maybe 70, you know, and then networking opportunity and vice versa. So you, you according to your thinking, what will be your most important factors to consider when you are submitting your film to the festival? We would love to hear from you. It's a little bit of math mathematics tricky things to do uh well uh, it's already nine o'clock in malaysia nine twelve in malaysia which is about uh eight twelve in indonesia uh, jakarta and Jogja, and maybe seven 
40 plus in Yangon, Myanmar. Uh, yeah, nighttime is not the time for mathematics. <laughs> but if you are on these apps, you should be able to see how you can allocate uh, points according to your 100 points. All right. So interesting. So we have three audience submitted the answer already. <laughs> Come, submit your answer as quick as you could. We have 66 audience uh, online and we have three answers coming in at the moment. And yeah, four answers coming in. <laughs> it's like mathematic class now, right? <laughs> even at, wow, well, even at eight, well, you put it that seven numbers are more. <laughs> Interesting to see. Okay, well, we have eight audience. We'll wait for you. No worry, take your time to our audience. Interesting because these are the factors that most of the filmmakers would, would consider when they are submitting their film. Because if you are submitting your film to a festival, what kind of things that you will think about, you know, like networking opportunity or like how much you are going to pay for if you are going to pay for this festival like is it free to submit your film for instance or maybe other factors that we don't know maybe you can also tell us in the uh, chat box in the comment bottom uh, of your mini film festival facebook so we can read from there for instance uh, meanwhile waiting for your answers actually i have a few questions coming in like for example when you have decided to move your festival online, will you face difficulty to convince uh, the filmmakers to send their film to you? Maybe any one of you would like to talk about this? I believe it's, it's not easy, right? So uh, I was told by uh, Wei Jie in C Shots, after you all have decided to move online, actually you have to go on to one phase of like sending email out to the filmmakers, informing about this decision and waiting for their response to tell you if they are okay to move the film online. So it's actually a tough process and at least a few of the filmmakers replied they don't want at all and they don't want to submit the film to your festival because you have decided to move online, right? So maybe you can talk about this while well, we are waiting for the uh, audience to give the answer. Yeah, okay. So, um, because I guess we um, called in April mm. and we, we got the films back, uh, we got the submissions by the end of the month and so we asked the questions just about when we decided to go online and then um, one of the key realization was that because a lot of the major film festivals have been pushed back from the beginning of the year and mm. to indefinite, um, some, has, some has actually postponed to second half of 2020, but now even pushing it back to 2021. So that means they are skipping the year. So I think Sea Shots is such a baby festival and mm. uh, I don't think it's going to be the priority that they want to submit the film to Sea Shots mm. first. So mm. if they were to do that and then... I would believe, as a filmmaker myself, I would then try to keep that uh, premier status for a more prestigious or, or, or more uh, larger festival. Because if you're supposed to be ho uh, held in um, August, September period, so you would think that you clear everything from January all the way and then you come see short, so it's not so bad. Um, so that's one concern, uh, premier, mm. uh, premiering status. Hmm. Second will of course be the the whole geo blocking situation. I think that concern. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. We can talk about also, that further. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also, um, which platform are we going to put the films on? There are some platforms hmm. that uh, people are, are a lot less comfortable with, and then um, then but if you have some too obscure platform, maybe the bandwidth is not enough. Hmm. So there's a lot of uh, technical uh, situation that we are thinking about as well. But uh, mainly premiership and piracy um, tends to be the, the biggest concerns. I see, I see. So premiership and piracy will be main concern, at least from the organizer perspective, looking into the filmmakers, right? So it's C-Shot yeah. perspective. Uh, I think there is one point. Uh, C-Shot is the baby festival compared to other fe festivals in Southeast Asia and even those big name film festivals in the European countries like Locarno, Venice, Sundance, we, we are relatively small compared to these giants out there. So 
if you are moving online, somehow you should have a pooling power to convince the filmmakers to submit their film to you. So maybe any of you panelists out there to maybe talk about this. How, how can you actually convince the filmmaker to submit their film to you, right? So uh, unless you, you really have a very strong network with the filmmakers, maybe, right? Uh, otherwise, when they want to submit their film, they will think many, many times if they want to submit the film to you. So any, any suggestion from maybe FFD or uh, KKIFF or any of you like Tidy or Sunshine? To talk about this since you are going online partially so how are you going to convince your filmmakers to submit their film to you is that a difficult um, question to ask can i yeah yeah please can i speak for because we worked the other way around our submissions were already finished mm. uh, you know we uh, at the end of april so mm. um so the issue of, of going online didn't arise until after that. Mm. Um, if you see what I mean. So it was kind of, we were kind of back to front. Mm. Um, uh, I've, uh, the movies that have been selected uh, for this year, um, all the uh, uh, directors have been informed that the KKFF will be going online, but I haven't given them uh, any details yet. We're, you know, we're working out the final details. And, and then, of course, they will, we, we'll ask for an agreement uh, mm. with them about uh, showing their films online. Um, our plan is to have a festival that's five days long, and we're, I mean, we know that security is an issue, so mm. not only for these filmmakers, but also for um, embassies in KL, we get movies from the embassies as well. Mm. And for them, changing our festival from uh, being in a cinema to being online means that they have to look into their the screening rights that they already have. And so as a result of that, some of the embassies have said, well, no, we, we don't have screening mm. rights for an online festival. Mm. So mm. we're still working through those issues as well. What what uh, we will be doing is using Vimeo, mm. uh, Vimeo Plus or Vimeo yeah. uh, Pro, um, so that we can embed the movies in the KKIFF website. They won't be able, they won't be available on Vimeo. Mm. Uh, they people won't be able to upload them on Vimeo. They'll only be uh, they'll only have access through our website. So mm, they'll mm. sign up for an account with our website and then they'll, they'll be able to access all the films. I mean, there'll be one sign up. And we're, we're going to geo-block. So uh, we're, 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 our goal is to geo-block around Southeast Asia, which is, yeah. which yeah. is where our festival is aimed at. Mm. Um, and also we'll IP-block, so... You know, mm. the, the movies will only be available through one um, uh, device. So oh, right. those are the things that we're trying to do to protect the movies. I mean, I guess any really techie person can get mm. hold of anything they really want and that that's a reality um, mm. Mm. Uh, with online stuff as well. But we'll do mm. the best that we can anyway. Mm, okay, got it, got it. So there will be some technical consideration to be talked about, which we will talk about it later, like in terms of jaw locking, okay. avoiding piracy, for instance, right? So um, um, I think it's, it's uh, very interesting to see how our audience has responded to this. Uh, let, let's have a quick look on, on how they respond. Okay, so if you can look into the screen at the moment, we have uh, 35, maybe it's a very tough question for them to, you know, uh, to, to answer and they need to do some mathematics on their phone. But uh, out of the answer we have, I believe uh, these uh, filmmakers put so much importance on the piracy and security issue uh, consideration for the film because they believe if their film is submitted, maybe their film will be, you know, uh, downloaded and being shared online to other parties. And uh, the next uh, consideration will be networking opportunity. So they place very much uh, priority on this, on network, networking opportunity, either with the filmmakers, with other filmmakers, with the film, film festival organizer, for instance. And the next one, I think, is also closely related with the piracy and uh, like this actually very closely related is the 
uh, film premiership and its possibility to be accepted in other festival. So let's say they have already submit to you and you are organizing online festival. So they might lose uh, this opportunity to send their film to other festival, right? So because it's already premiered or somehow shown in your festival online, for instance. And the cost is uh, not so much uh, importance uh, like the, the, the fourth. And the final one is actually the others. Uh, factors okay so you can drop by your your reasons of others or uh, the factors of others in our facebook comment box so that we can read from there and let's move on from there okay so we had two person talking about uh jude day and nicholas uh, c shots and kkff talking about uh the issues and consideration from their side how about uh the others uh, you know anita sunshine and uh, tidy what what will be uh, your your consideration and how can you improve your festival since you are partially organizing your festival online hmm. before we move into the technical aspect of uh, doing jaw locking and things that we can have nicholas and uh jude to talk about that yeah tiny please thank you yes uh <clears throat> we we don't have um, uh, we, our our festival is um, the competition main competition session is only local mm. and then international the Southeast Asian session international sessions are like um, uh, programmed by the programmers like S A Stress program for Southeast Asian and so on so uh, we don't have to attract the um, the filmmaker to. For the international filmmakers and then the mm -hmm. local premiere is also like uh, most of the filmmakers and the network is really small and we know each other very well mm -hmm. and uh, the the online is like because like the government didn't announce anything uh, to do the the public events any mm -hmm. with, um, uh, thing so like uh, we are like doing like um, we have to improvise somehow till now we haven't decided to go everything online or any, uh, we try to as much as possible like uh, uh, on site. So uh, what I want to say is like, we're, we're, I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> what mm -hmm. I want to say is like, you know, the the online is like uh, the, the piracy, the, the technical part, I'm, I'm still learning and we are still discussing with the, with our technical team how to do it. And then I'm, I'm sure I also need to learn uh, from everyone like uh, which is the best platform to help uh, to, to screen it and then there's so many challenge and it's very new for us mm -hmm. but like uh, we think like it can we can keep it uh, the online thing can be keep it uh, if it is what this year maybe we'll keep it the other year as, as all the discussion and panel will be go both online and offline uh, to keep it this way uh, for next years and so on the, that's mm -hmm. the thing. What so we you have mentioned like, one very interesting point is that you have you you uh, Myanmar filmmakers are very much uh, close-knit and uh, you all know each other so it's very easy for you to somehow talk to them and convince them to yeah. uh, show their film in your festival. Okay, so about the filmmakers from other countries, uh, so that, that may be a challenge because when they have to fly into Myanmar, uh, you, you, you don't know if they can actually fly in or not uh, in, in the time that you're going to organize your festival, right? Yeah. So very likely you are going to invite them and speak online. Online, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good solution. A lot of, yeah, a lot of discussion could be uh, can, uh, will be uh, will be online. I think mm -hmm. yeah. our festival is uh, also don't have much money, so normally we don't mm -hmm. have much people can uh, to to invite also. So very mm -hmm. yeah, small filmmaker that we can invite. So the online mm -hmm. is a good opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so online actually provide a new uh, avenue to reduce the cost by having these filmmakers to speak online. You have no need to fly them in because logistic cost is actually one of the big budget in the festival, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So how about Thailand or Indonesia? Is that your big consideration? Uh, you know, you have to spend so much to bring the film, uh, filmmakers into your festivals. How, how can you work this out? Maybe Anita or yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, for the uh, piracy, uh, hmm. I think uh, in a digital uh, world, in digital era, hmm. uh, many things are are very possible to hack. Hmm. I mean, uh, when we have a cinema and people have this digital camera, people try to record in the cinema. 
mm. and uh, spread the villain and so on. Mm. Uh, uh, we can try our best to uh, protect, but of course we cannot uh, give a hundred percent promise that mm. uh, it won't be mm. able to uh, hack True. or crack. True. Uh, so uh, we also uh, do research. Uh, in last uh, a month, uh, from other festival, mm. uh, uh, how they protect uh, their uh, film and how they uh, uh, set up all the security on on their website or mm. a video uh, player platform. And um, now uh, we try to uh, uh, contact uh, some of uh, uh, platform uh, service. And also, we uh, gonna have a meeting soon with our uh, webmaster mm. uh, to start discussing uh, the best platform we can do for this. And mm. then we, uh, uh, that's what we gonna offer to the filmmaker. Mm. And about the uh, premiere, uh, luckily, luckily uh, FFD uh, 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 is uh, held in uh, December. Mm. So yeah, as a mm, Many uh, film uh, that are submitted in our festival usually they are uh, already screened in a bigger festival in, mm -hmm. in other countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, so far we don't have a, a, a problem of that uh, a, a premiere, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, usually we have a guest uh, from a board or jury uh, or uh, a panelist from uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, because we also still don't know the inter international travel restriction uh, mm -hmm. in next few months in Indonesia, uh, so uh, uh, the only way uh, we will try like this uh, type of webinar, and uh, of course that uh, physical interaction uh, is much different with, uh, with the online interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think like uh, many people today are used to this kind of platform. So yeah, we are, yeah. I actually, uh, I mean, I, I appreciate how how uh, in depth that you actually talk about so many topics in one go. And about piracy is actually one of the very interesting culture in Indonesia or maybe Jogja itself is the cyber cafe culture. And I was told when I was there, yeah. uh, you can actually bring your heart, heart yeah. disk and bring into the cyber cafe and you can download thousands of films and then you can yeah. bring back and watch it at home. So, yeah. and it's the sharing and caring culture in Indonesia or maybe Jogja itself uh, brought in by the students in the universities because they believe um, this film is not easy to get uh, you know, out, out there. And then when you can share this with many people, so the film watching culture is actually very vibrant in Indonesia in that sense where people love to share films among themselves for free without um yeah if we are not looking from the perspective of the capitalists or those uh, you know those who own the film so i believe that is actually a very uh, vibrant culture to look into and even to study scholarly yeah thank you for sharing from anita and how about thailand is that really you know you have to think about piracy premiership and interaction between filmmakers and so so many aspects to think about so how are you going to go about this yes uh the piracy is really big concern for us mm. uh even during the covid 19 at the film archive we also because we have to cross down our service in the film archive but we still have some film that we that uh we don't need to worry about the copyright film. So we put it on YouTube and then they go around and, you know, whatever that we know that that what the people need and that beginning of the COVID-19, everybody have to stay in their home. So that's what we serve on that purpose. But it's, it turned out really, really well. But again, uh, what the, 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 you know, the privacy is always a big concern for us and we cannot protect any kind of any film because cannot guarantee that it's not everything is going to be okay and not guarantee that so that's why we afraid of but uh the short film 
are submit to us mostly from the local and from the mm. student. So they might put their on their own online already or something like that. So yeah. that's another another thing. But what are, what another thing that I really concerned is about the audience. Uh, okay, apart from cinematic experience, it's also some audience, some our regular audience, they not have the uh you know uh internet or mm. e- even the computer or something like that they don't have that mm. and that 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 there are some of our regular audience that we we have to care about as well True. so now even um i don't know because i was in Watan. Watan, even you less budget or less funding but you have a big cloud you know you have a full house and I, I think wow. in that house, I'm sure half of them no cannot access the internet. I'm sorry mm-hmm. to say that, but that's a, that is that is true. So I think this 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 idea that to bring it online is okay for some generation, but for some generation they don't use to it. The true. retirement uh, or the age people or some you know uh, mm. and and yeah. <laughs> and underprivileged. <laughs> and, and oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a very good point because. So, so that's but, why we decide to insist in on site first, of course, and yeah, if something happens, we might think about that. But yeah, even now when you know we already open our daily screening, I still asking my colleague that oh that uncle already come. He said um, that uncle, <laughs> our Likula because they miss, we stopped uh, screening for three months, hmm. and you know they. You know, we lost of them. We don't want to lose the of them. We want to keep them back. And this mm. is a uh, uh, oasis because oh them they cannot go to normal cinema mm. with a lot of reason. But here they are welcome to come to see the film here. So this thing that we are worried about as well. Yeah, mm. that's just one point that I, is our concerns. Yeah. I really treasure this point when I mean, um, screening film on film festival is not about how many people is going to come but it's about how much relationship we had already built with our audience when mm. you when you can see your regular audience coming back even in their old age of like 60 70 or even 80s and they keep coming back to your festival at this old age it's a very happy things to look into and it almost bring me to tears when you talk about it and you keep on asking your 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 mm-hmm. your stuff about oh is this old uncle or old auntie coming back today you know well it's a very beautiful and romantic kind of imagination that i can even can be made into a film uh, uh, an old couple coming into the cinema every day you know wow beautiful beautiful so this online and off-site screening another perspective to look into is about the exclusivity and inclusivity of doing it because by doing online, we might be excluding uh, these underprivileged people who have no ability to access to online, either because they are poorer, they have no internet access, and they don't know they are not tech savvy and they don't know how to you know go online using their phone or their uh, their laptop, for instance. So yes, that, that is a very good point to bring into. And about the cost and fundings, does going online change? the way you manage your festival? Does it impact your festival in general? Anyone? <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, you have to ask the online people, right? Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> please, please. Okay. Please, um, going online already. I, I think um, one of the biggest excitement or challenges mm. for film festival is about fundraising mm. <laughs> sponsorship and um i think putting a film festival together is not it's not different from say making your your, your own independent film and mm. a lot of us are actually filmmakers to mm. begin with i believe and mm. then we, we go into the the other side where we bring films to other audiences and i, I think to answer the question um of funding and, and expenses. I I agree with Jude. I think one of the big costs that we can now save on is uh, travel and uh, hospitality. Mm, the logistics. I mean, because mm. Miss Sea Shots is, because it's not a local uh, targeted, it is the regional one. 
and uh, that means people will come in from all over Southeast Asia and, and that already we were trying to see if we can get some sort of sponsorship from a, from a regional airline. I mean, that's just logical, right? We already found hotels actually uh, in, in, in Ipoh and then we found a cinema that we want to screen in. We basically approached and they're generally okay with that. But um, it's still a, a big sum of money. It's five digit ringgit. And then we realized that, hey, now that we don't have to fly people in, uh, what we could possibly do is to increase the cash price which now becomes an opportunity. Mm. So to answer the question, if, if um, um, how do you attract people to, to submit for online? I mean, you just make sure you have a lot of money to give away, mm. right? So, so I think that is, then I, I, I've decided with my team that I think um, because we can't fly them over, let's use the money that mm. they would have to, to give them back the money. So, and also I think we, we are, guaranteeing because our format is we will shortlist to 30 finalists mm. and we actually told the finalists that we will once you are finalist we will have money for you mm. oh yeah yeah okay so, so that is a guarantee 30 you filmmakers will be receiving a yeah. amount of money oh that's great because it, it's money that will be spent to bring them over so it's rightful mm. that they also get it in exchange and and these are tough times Mm. Um, hopefully yeah. the money that they, they get can help them make Another a movie. film mm. yeah in during covid and we are short film festival so so i think we believe that we should really use this opportunity to to also um, alleviate any hardship in the region yeah uh, and uh, by by giving the money away, you are actually creating a new formula in organizing film festival. Because most of the time, this festival is not going to give money if the film got nominated. They will only maybe give mm. awards or money when they got awarded, uh, being given yes. the award, right? So this formula is a new formula in, I would say, relatively new to Southeast Asian or even the world, where yep. you are going to give money to the filmmakers maybe can you review a little bit how much are you going to give oops <laughs> uh, i i think it depends on where you because from where oh, i am in singapore uh, the currency when we use it's going to be a little bit small but um it's i would say it's substantial i would say it's, it's enough for you to possibly um uh -huh start making the next film it will be 50 percent of what a what a typical um, southeast okay. asian independent film budget will be like yeah, yeah. okay i mean so i don't want to review the amount but we it's it's, it's three digit it's a mid high three digit ringgit oh ringgit okay okay yeah that's, right, that is right. that is that is um that is already um uh shortlist okay which means if you win there on top there's there's even more yeah 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 yeah, that's, oh, that's ask, good. yeah. Can, can I add something that when, yeah, we, sure, when sure. we approach the sponsors this year and they were actually a, a, a quite happy uh -huh. that they prefer the online because the exposure is greater. Oh, yeah. Because more exposure, more people can watch the film. Yeah. And All if right, they do workshop, um, brand workshops, because they are the equipment sponsors for prizes, mm. they are mm. happier than, than it, um, if I it's um, physical. Mm, mm, yeah. mm, so, mm, so great. points from, um, from a from a sponsorship perspective. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas, for this very uh, good point. And uh, just now we had also mentioned about jaw locking, you know, in order to somehow um, allow this film being shown only to certain part of the world, of the audience. So you have to go on with this service of uh, jaw locking. I believe Jude Day and KKIFF and Nicholas and maybe some of you had already considered doing that. May, may I know, um, I, I, I'm not familiar with this at all so maybe any of you can talk about this uh, like if you have already considered doing jaw lock how, how much have you have to pay for it and what what kind of uh, availability of this kind of service out there is that a lot of this kind of service out there what is the solution for this maybe you can talk about this so the general audience or even festival organizer can learn from this uh, can i talk yeah. about what we're doing oh hmm. sorry nicholas no, you go ahead no no you go, you go ahead nicholas. Yeah, no problem. Uh, yeah. Um, we uh, we're going to do it through our web um, our web company, web design company, <coughs> so that when people register, mm. um, 
we can see uh, what country they're in and only people from Southeast Asian countries can register. So that's how we're going to, um, <coughs> pardon me, control it. Hmm. I see. Okay. So jaw locking means you have to be uh, coming in from certain part of the world. Let's say you are only giving this access to Southeast Asian filmmakers the, or Southeast Asian audience. That means that they can access from their country in a sweet space of their home. So how about if let's say they are uh, Southeast Asian citizens, but they are living somewhere in US, for instance, can they actually watch the films or they cannot watch the film at all? The answer for the KKF IFF will be no, they won't be able to watch the films. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Mm, yeah, yeah. <coughs> pardon me. Mm. One of the reasons um, that we wanted geo-blocking was um, also for the movies that we get from the embassies that maybe it would be <laughs> easier for them to confirm with their, you know, from their distributors um, <coughs> if we geo-blocked. Um, but we we feel that uh, you know that it, that's the region that our festival is open to. So for our submissions for Cinebalo or our filmmakers competition, uh, mm -hmm. or for the pitching training, it's open to people from to filmmakers from Southeast Asia. So that makes sense for us to to geo block in that way. Um, and really, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for us. To include more people, uh, you know, uh, of course, nothing is like going to the cinema. I would, I would never mm. want to replace this with going to the cinema. And I know that for some of our filmmakers, just seeing their movie up there, you know, in a really wonderful cinema with wonderful sound and everything, is just an amazing experience for them. And, uh, you know, I'm not a filmmaker at all. So mm. for me, Thrill is to see the thrill that the, that the um, filmmaker gets from just watching their film that you know they've sweated through and uh, worked on for years sometimes, you know. So, um, yeah, nothing, I, I don't believe anything replaces the on, the um, actual oh, live yeah. experience. But um, I think it's a great opportunity for us to learn and to to experience what it is to do things online for our, our i know that you'll probably talk about this later but for our online interaction because we do try to have as much uh, q a after our movies as we can um and some of the filmmakers from around the region we can get funding to fly in uh for their the movie screenings <clears throat> but in place of that for this festival we'll, we're planning four webinars um mm you know, but, uh, looking at certain of the movies, discussing certain of the movies. So yeah. that's how we hope to uh, continue with our audience interaction. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Yeah. Nicholas, you were about to say something, right? Yeah, please. Yeah, I was, uh, because I'm the tech guy, uh -huh. on top of the sponsor guy, on top uh -huh. of the... <laughs> uh, yeah, one, one of the yeah one one of the key things that we did was I, I think we want to emulate we were thinking about emulating the physical um, event so I think the question that you had earlier was if if someone is a Southeast Asian person but in somewhere else what happens right so yeah. uh, we 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 started off with, with this track that um, a physical festival would mean that you have to be there yes. so that's rule number one and yeah. then you have to be there at the screening at yeah. that time. So um, we were also thinking if if we should premiere the films based on a fixed timing, mm. um, like as if you were there. So we force yeah. people to take leave, Comply even though the they are not coming. Yeah, even if they're not coming to the the, the physical one because it doesn't mm. exist, will they make time and and separate and book and, and actually um, book out seven or five days, seven to five days, and to attend. Hmm. the event hmm. but then some people were saying that uh, what if their internet connection is bad at that time yeah. then they will miss the stuff so we also hmm. learned from the other festivals that have gone online um, uh, we are hmm. one that they hmm. make films available from either 24 hours or hmm. maybe even the duration of the week so that people yeah. can catch up on their own yeah. um, we, we have decided to go with Vimeo OTT platform hmm. um, basically it's like Vimeo but 
it's like starting your own Netflix. Mm, mm. And you have to register. Uh, you mm. get a pass. And then once you're inside, you're pretty much inside uh, an, an ecosystem. Then we can do screenings based on the selections. And then we can actually decide by country which IP addresses can actually watch these films. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. And also because we are also um, adding in um, a Japanese program because one of our partners, uh, sponsors is uh, JFKL. Mm. And then this year we have a, a, a Taiwanese um, mm. programs because we have uh, the Taiwan government to sponsor as well. Mm. Then we're thinking, oh, maybe that set can then be larger so we mm. can add another country. So yeah. sometimes this is a way to circumvent. But like I said, people who are techie, uh, what, what Anita said, if they want to, they, they'll find a way they can... They can teleport themselves to Southeast Asia <laughs> and, and watch uh, um, the films. But then that will be um, something that we cannot guarantee, which is why we, even if we promise we will take precautions, uh, it's never going to be 100%. We can't. Yeah. Sunshine also said so. So we, we tell you, we do what we can. We, we show you our technology back end. Mm. And um, hopefully that brand is bigger than us to give that security. So we are leveraging that as well. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah. I, yeah, Anita, yeah, uh, please. Uh, hi, uh, Nicholas. Uh, do you know uh, that uh, the real truth that uh, Vimeo is blocked in Indonesia? Yeah, true. Vimeo is blocked in uh, Indonesia it, yeah, by, we, by yeah. the Indonesian <laughs> government. That is yeah, we, we, we checked. Uh, uh, so you cannot access Vimeo at all, is it? Yes. Yes, cannot. yes exactly. So uh, how Indonesian audience can we, watch it? Uh, we use a premium VPN. Ah, so you yes. must use VPN, is it? <laughs> yeah, premium VPN, then we can access Vimeo. Yeah, as non which means, Oh, which means a lot of people already have VPN in, in Indonesia. Uh, uh, like, uh, usually, uh, we use, like, a free VPN to upload. Because, like, actually, with Vimeo, we can connect to, like, a Dropbox or a Google Drive. Mm. So we, we tried that trick uh, and uh, a few people, we, uh, that's uh, because the premium v VPN is quite expensive actually uh, mm. for Indonesia mm -hmm. uh, in general. So uh, some of them buy premium VPN, but the rest, they use like uh, this uh, free VPN that will be like buffering all the time. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. But thank you for, thank you so much for telling me this because we checked and then we found out that um, Vimeo doesn't block Indonesia, so it must yeah. be. Uh, the Indonesian Indonesia. government block uh, Vimeo since some years ago. Yeah, I think uh, when one of the filmmakers. Our government that we we block uh, th that they block uh, Vimeo. Yeah. yeah, I think okay. it was that and time when filmmakers upload uh, some kind of film and bypass the censorship, and the Indonesian government wasn't happy with that, and from there on they block Vimeo uh, throughout Indonesia. So I think can it I, was that time. Yeah. Can I just ask uh, Anita if so? If you were to go through our KKIFF website in order yeah. to access the movies which are on Vimeo, could you get them? Uh, let me check. I believe because, cannot too, because in the end, you still have to access through Vimeo, right? Yeah, yeah I, I believe yeah. cannot too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jude, looks like we need Plan B. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a good meeting point where we realize some issues and at least you know this earlier before your event before your festival mm. so that you can somehow cater to indonesian audience yeah mm. <laughs> thank you anita for this point yeah. yes you probably uh, have to write to the Indone the indonesian government for this i mean it's 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 a uh, unprecedented times uh yeah in indonesian government please allow vimeo just yeah. For this year, at least, I think. <laughs> uh, also, we block Netflix. <laughs> Netflix too. They, they block Netflix, but oh, uh, they oh. say they're gonna open soon for Netflix. Oh, okay. Netflix, we don't know. <laughs> okay. But I, I saw my friends Indonesian watching Netflix. Okay, that must be VPN bypass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, no worry. So interesting to hear from Indonesia and uh, Malaysia side about Myanmar and Thailand. Any anything that you would like to add on from from here? Yes, maybe um, 
because like uh, we since the COVID nineteen uh, started, like we are also concerned about the the festival. So what we start is like uh, we start to upload our old film from like uh, pre, uh, the early years, and we talk with the filmmaker. We start to upload on YouTube. Mm. Uh, YouTube channel and try to test it out with the Myanmar audience how they're going to mm. watch YouTube mm. because a lot of Burmese people are using mainly Facebook they don't even want to go to YouTube video is pretty way much far for us like you know like they um, mostly the people only watch video on Facebook only so we are start trying to practice a little bit with the YouTube channel and yeah, some people go and see it, but like a majority are like watching on 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 only on Facebook. So that's another big issue for us, like how to track the the our local Bami's audience to go to the Vimeo or YouTube or like go and watch the films. Uh, that's a quite big challenge that we found out. We have been trying this uh, a few uh, two months, like uh, try test upload film on YouTube and the Bami's audience uh, not much go to see outside of Facebook, everybody on Facebook all the time. Mm. <laughs> so uh, how is the response when you go on YouTube? Is that getting better now? I mean, um, because you have tried that, right? Yeah, like uh, during COVID time, like uh, the film that p the most people watch is like 1,500 view only. Mm. And then, you know, like, of course, 200, 300, like, fewer, like, but, you know, I don't know, like, how they count the, the viewer count or, like, it was a bit uh, different. Uh, the In Facebook, like, you know, the popular, like, uh, videos are always, not normal videos are always, like, around, like, uh, 5,000, 6,000 viewer, and then it can be, like, some of my friend documentary are a million viewer on Facebook, uh, even, like, a 30-minute documentary, you know, like, so people are more watching and used to watch and share a lot on Facebook. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe like I will also need to learn uh, you guys, uh, especially Nicholas. Maybe you can learn to just yeah, uh, yeah. How, how to handle all these things in, on the internet. It's very new for us. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we can have another session, closed session or what. Uh, mm -hmm. Then we can learn from tech people on how to do it on Vimeo OTT, for instance, from Nicholas. <laughs> okay, uh, for our audience out there, if you are watching this, uh, please, uh, if you have any question, you can drop at the comment box of the uh, Facebook uh, so that uh, my team, our student team can compile the question and uh, put it into the box. Uh, yes, one point that mentioned by Tidy just now is about how much are we ready, not only as an organizer of film festival, but also our audience. How much our audience are ready for the change from moving physically to either partially online and offline and or fully online. So the understanding of our audience play a very important role. For instance, in Myanmar, the consumptions, uh, film consumption is in, in Myanmar, they are very much into Facebook instead of Vimeo uh, or even YouTube. So that is a very good understanding to, to, to do first, to do the survey and understand before we can move to any other platform that we would like to choose. Yeah, so how, how is the situation in Thailand? Is that very much similar or but i believe thai filmmakers use a lot of Vimeo and youtube right yes uh actually during the covid 19 yeah there are some uh local distributor a small mm. distributor they put the feed in Vimeo mm. as well and then they charge the money so the people go to see it and you know Vimeo they have that kind of system and i think they also do the geo block for yes. first film only for thailand mm. i think Singapore also, I, I, I see some of the Singaporean film that do the uh, video with GeoBlock. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they have some trick that uh, we sh I shared yesterday that because of the normally the video, the setting, the quality, the picture and quality in high quality as much as possible. Yeah. So if your internet is not good enough, it's going to be mm. like, stop every five minutes or something like that. So you need to set thing lower quality so yeah. that might make your feel more smoothly um <laughs> and also now I, I i see some of the film company in in, in international distributor they mm. also provide the uh uh private link to mm. see the film as mm. well if you uh, pay them the uh, license fee they mm. will generate the 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 password 
for like mm. let's say like 200 audience or something like that and then the people who got the password can get to the see the film for 24 hours or 48 hours that mm. i that happened in thailand that i see oh. some of them use it as well so now there are a lot of uh yeah for the for the online they online watching film is becoming more and more regular uh familiar familiarizing um but yeah if somehow it's quite funny because i i heard someone say like oh normally during the during the uh, normal situation we rarely have a chance to see art film but during the covid it turned out that a lot of art too many art film that we can see you know what it, it means because it's like because the big the big film they not go online for sure so only like a, some independent or some small film that can go online with some you know distributor or company or uh, some embassy or thing like that they offer that kind of choice so the people now they have too many independent yes. choice to, yeah. to see so this is quite interesting and um, also one one of thing that because i'm i'm working a full-time job at the film mm. and also have to work at home and then go to office and thing like that it turned out like uh we are quite excited with the screen culture yeah all yeah. screen culture now a day I, I i have to say that because you know if we have like meeting the whole day with the zoom or google or yes. you know, have, it's yes. really excited and yes. it's like, i don't want to see any film on the spare screen anymore because like <laughs> Oh my god again so this is the thing that pushed me back to like no no so i rarely watch the film online nowadays i mean mm -hmm. you know, have to get go to like a big screen or something like that that's mm -hmm. more comfort zone for me yes. because otherwise it's going to be like i'm working you know it's like oh i'm working because now i'm looking on the screen all the time it's yeah. all day because of that the culture and the kind of thing the changing so this is the thing that i've so Feel myself. I don't know what the other people think about that. And also in the future, after the COVID nineteen, I really uh, doubt about the uh, movie go movie watching culture gonna change it or not, because mm -hmm. people will see everything online for almost two years or one year or and a half thing like that. Then after that, are they go back to that movie or not? Are they gonna watch it online or they just require you like oh put it online put it online because it's more easy for them or they just like okay i would go to a cinema like the past so this mm. kind of thing that challenging me and it's a big question as a film arch archivist so we think about that as well like oh I, I we don't want to lose that kind of uh habit you know cinema going habit so yeah. I that i'm asking myself a lot as lately as well Mm. Because since you, you are working as film archive uh, archivist yourself, you have to also somehow think about uh, film education, making sure your audience are being educated and they still feel the excitement going back to the cinema uh, and watching the film in that kind of experience and setting. Mm. So you, you, I believe uh, Thai, Thai is one of the, I would say, progressive in that sense. Because compared to many other Southeast Asian countries, you, you still have those, like for example, standalone art house cinema. Uh, we don't have it here in Malaysia, I believe. Uh, it's no longer any standalone cinema, but, only those in the shopping complex. Yeah, unfortunately, during the COVID-19, the Scala, the only standalone, ah, yeah. in Bangkok, they're going to closing down. Oh my it's, God. So, <laughs> and the archive, we do the the last program, the farewell program for them, screening uh -huh. on Saturday and Sunday. Uh -huh. yeah, so they, because, you know, they cannot open the play the theater for almost three months. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that, that's it, the story. So it's oh quite sad story and tragic, but again, it's, it's reflect how the COVID-19 is very bad in yeah. that side. And impact. Yeah, mm. on impact and, and yeah, so we, we, we use this opportunity to 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 bring the people back to theater again mm. to see you know bit farewell of that old cinema because it's 50 years old actually yeah. so yeah we we try like to make it more yeah 
important event to to bring the people back to theater again to see the people uh, the people see the watching movie again and that's theater so that's the thing that we are doing um, on this weekend yeah marvelous marvelous it's, it's good to know that you are doing that uh, for at least what you are trying to do because i remember it, it's kind of like a must do for film lovers when they arrive in bangkok one of the must do thing is to go to scala and watch film inside scala so i, I remember when i went to uh, bangkok two years ago i purposely go there with my friends and uh, watch film inside and take photos outside it's like a cult thingy to do if you are in bangkok and if you are a film lovers oh my god it's going to close is there any efforts like maybe this outside of this uh any efforts like crowdfunding so that they can still continue to sustain themselves it's quite <laughs> well because uh that the company because they're not on the land they, they lend yeah. the land to one of the universities and they mm. the, the, the the rental fee is really high because that plan mm. location is a city of, of city center of bangkok mm. so it's quite a plan location and also the uh, the theater owner they are old now they just yeah. so they want to uh, retire. retire as well so this is a chance i mean in the beginning the contract will be end the end of this year mm. but the point I is make it more faster so mm. make it faster to so that's why they decide to end it uh the, the half of the year so mm. yeah, for the uh, cinephile, we are really, really sorry for that. And then we we show the film, uh, six six screening. They all sold out now. Uh, mm, with great. Thousand four hundred tickets sold out. Wow. So that that uh, but the theater is really big. Theater is a nine nine hundred nine hundred uh, seat. So we, yeah. we because of the COVID nineteen, so we can sell the ticket only half of them. Yeah. So that social distancing. Yeah. Yeah, so that that all uh so out so that that means something that the people still want Love. to yeah want to go out and watch it and say goodbye to the theater. So yeah, yeah, there are some groups that they try to find a way to sustain it, but because of the it's it's not it's not only the landlord, but it's also the business, uh, the mm-hmm. the, the theater owner that they decide to to quit. So you cannot like ask them to open it you know it's, it's impossible in that mm. way so yeah that's the mm. thing thank you very much sanjay uh i think your point actually bring us near to the end of the discussions where somehow COVID 19 had changed the way we consume film we watch film and even the business side of it on how people manage their business uh, are they now going online entirely uh, and they are going to screen up film entirely. So that, that is the thing that we are going into. So I, I believe even film festival has to rethink, reimagine and reshape the way they organize film festival now. So uh, can you maybe everyone to talk about these final things? Uh, like uh, how, how do you imagine your festivals will be in the coming years? Right? Uh, are you... Uh, have to incorporate online slowly and maybe move like go into half half in this way in the future or so how so maybe this can be a topic to look into so well we are about to close it <laughs> well while waiting for any any of you to respond uh i will sh- i will share this um for, for your informations uh these are the festival dates uh for all the festival panelists uh since they are here so the earliest one will be on the 25th to 30th august by c shots so it's actually the earliest so remember to book your ticket and check out their website uh i believe you can somehow look into something from from their website already and the second one will be kkiff on the 11 to 15 september and 10 to 18 october for watan uh, that, that will be the tentative late date because they, they are not sure either the government might be pushing the dates to us some other dates. But uh, they have chosen a very beautiful date. It's actually 10, 10 October uh, because it's their 10th anniversary. So it's a b- very beautiful date. So please remember that 10 October, the 10th anniversary of Watan Festival in Myanmar. 
And in SFD, uh, Festival Film Documenter, will be early December. Check out their website, uh, even their social media. So, and the last one will be the mid December for Festival Film, short film, short film and video festival in Thailand in mid December. So, check it out, check it out. <laughs> so, maybe we can about to wrap up this. Uh, maybe any one of you would like to share on how you foresee and see the future of film festival uh, in your country or the festival that you are involved involved now i, I think from what i heard from the mm. panelists i think we all miss the physical on festival mm. right? mm. June also said nicolas also said that you know uh of course next year if possible we will back to be the physical on-site festival again so mm. we, we need social yeah you know, we, we we are scared of social distancing so we need to be part of social society we need a dark room we need a big dark room we need the audience a company so yeah. that's what we miss so now i think this year is you know with our uncertainty i am really mm -hmm. understand why you all mm -hmm. go online on or uh, anything like that but i'm sure that we all have the same uh, go and say mission and same passion to mm. go in the dark room and watch film together. That's our mm. passion. And that's what the film festival is about. Mm. Okay. So that's what I, I, I feel from the other panelists today. Yeah, that, that there are two points. One, one is about uh, how we generally feel about watching the film experience inside the dark room. And it actually brings me to another question. Is that because generally we are old? You know, compared to our <laughs> upcoming young young audience who are maybe ten years old, you know, about twenty years old, they are already used to screen culture on the iPad, for instance, on the tablet, for instance. Well, it, in general, in this panelist, we are already more than forty years old or about no, that kind no. of age. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the youngest. <laughs> yeah, how 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 old are you? May, may I know, Anita? Like uh, 27. Oh, oh, you are the youngest. Wow. <laughs> yes, 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 you are the youngest. And you are the director of FFD. Oh my, it's, it's, a great, it's great to know. <laughs> just, just, a, just a TikTok generation, right? <laughs> Maybe her I, I, never, I never use TikTok. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, 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 can I say that yeah. my, my introduction to, to film and cinema is very different um i started as a tv addict i really like to watch mm. television um i never studied film i studied graphic design photography and um i played music mm. but i got bored so i thought when you combine image and music of course film is the next thing so i i, I did very silly random independent oh. stuff i also opened an independent cinema in singapore for five years that was the first crazy um it was the it was a cinema for singaporean films which at that time we didn't even make enough films for it to exist but um the funny thing is i look back and i was so busy working in that place uh, it's called cinema old school by the way that i never really had time to sit down and watch a film because i was always either in the projection room i was always either preparing the films or doing emails and stuff but what i noticed was um because we were we can't afford to buy cinema chairs we use sofas mm. and so okay. people got to sit side by side right and you see strangers becoming friends they, they come in to watch a film about north korea and then they don't know each other but by the time they go out they, they become friends and i think that sort of magic um cannot be replaced we, we could be different generations but just like vinyl and cassettes have come back i think this uh, dark room experience will come back maybe not in the 900 seater way mm. um maybe i think a golden number will be about um 60 to 80 seater and mm. they, because in southeast asia there are a lot of these old shop houses mm. that i've always fantasized about creating little minimas Mm, and yeah. answer the yeah to answer a question someone said about yeah micro cinemas micro cinemas and and yes. actually when my when the cinema old school closed i did plan out to do 
this thing called the minima so 60 80 mm. seater mm. and there's a lot of educational stuff but of course the approach is to like what sunshine say that suddenly there's a lot of art house films i think you suddenly have a lot of new fans mm. people are discovering non-mainstream films and then then they'll be yearning for more than what happens mm. so it's 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 not going to die it might just be a mixture of a I discover something online, but I want to have the experience to communicate with, with yeah, with people in a physical place. And I mm. think that's the way forward. Yeah, thank you. So that is actually a, a good question from one of our audience, Gaya Tri Nadia, who mentioned about uh, micro cinema and how it can be, which is already addressed by uh, Nicholas. Thank you, Gaya Tri and also Nicholas. Uh, and uh, one, one more question coming from Sharon, Sharon Jingyi. Uh, she asked, sorry, did anyone cover the film fees as going online may attract a higher number audience? Okay, so uh, have you, have you come, somehow decided how much you are going to charge? Uh, for example, Jude, uh, before the webinar started, actually she mentioned she's going to charge uh, the audience about uh, four, five, five dollars USD. Yeah. Yes. Pro yeah. Probably less than that, and it mm. will be a one-off payment. You'll pay to get your account, mm. and then after that, you can just watch all the movies. Uh, we plan to release uh, to have three programs. So mm. we release one program on the eleventh uh, of um, September, and those mm. movies are available until the fifteenth. Then mm. we release the second program on the twelfth, and they'll they'll be oh, available. Yeah. And then we release a third program on the 13th that's available to the 15th. But uh, that's just to try and keep people interested. And, you know, yeah. well, all Coming the movies back. available yesterday. I get some more today. Um, uh, but it's a one off payment. Um, that's, oh, we really want it to be as, as accessible to as many mm. people as possible. And it's not mm. a lot of money, not a lot of money at all that we're charging. So, mm. um, we, we had a lot of, last year for the first time, we had an online booking system to go into the movies, to buy your mm. tickets to the movies. And there was actually a, a lot of interest. We sold a lot more tickets that way than mm. walk-ins. Although, of course, the price differential was there as well. So even the grandmas were saying, oh, hey, at that price, I'll get my, you know, my nephew to help me, uh, <laughs> my grandson to help me uh, buy the mm. tickets online because, uh yeah, so we felt that the online thing was quite successful mm. uh, and that this year by doing the festival online, it's like an extension of that. Mm. But, but as I was saying, you know, I'm a passionate film goer. I mean, at a film festival, I can sit and watch four or five movies a day. I mean, I just love doing that. I love that whole experience. And to me, any kind of live theatre or live performance or live cinema, it's live, is, mm. is so much preferable to uh, anything online. Uh, just to me, it's, it's just a, a real experience and that, that's what I really love. So, mm. you know, I'm all for going back to the cinema. But in New Zealand, where I come from, there are lots of these small, small cinemas with sofas, comfortable chairs, audience of maybe 60, uh, mm. one cinema maybe two small theatres like that and they, they just, they show, uh, they have four or five screenings a day and mm. they are doing so well, yeah. so yeah. well. Mm. Yeah, but it's, yeah. Not, it's not the blockbuster group. It's not the blockbuster group at all. Mm -hmm. I, I can feel because you feel like it's a community that come together to watch film with you together and you can somehow mingle with these uh, same-minded people when they attended the screening together with you which I think in Southeast Asia we have some kind of effort or initiative in Brunei and uh, our friends in Indonesia uh, Mini Kino I think uh, Chika actually had uh, worked out with his uh, her husband uh, to, to have a small screening room uh, where they can screen the film in a small cinema, like so-called mini cinema in, in, in Bali. So, yeah, anyone out here, if you are interested to visit this kind of uh, the cinema, do drop a message to her in Mini Kino and uh, our friend in Brunei. Check it out because there are some initiatives like this. And there are so many other, uh, I would say, mushrooming 
film screening in Malaysia as well, uh, organized by those and uh, film enthusiasts who are passionate about discussing film. So they do it like uh, a short, a small screening, uh, maybe every week or every two weeks, uh, in the local uh, communities hall or something like that. Hmm. I um maybe it is not dying. Maybe that that I, we shouldn't say uh, this cinema culture is dying. But I believe there are so many other small efforts, even small or big, coming on their way. Hmm. Uh, in Indonesia, I I believe uh are uh, uh, far vibrant and uh different. Maybe you all can talk about that. Yeah. Uh yeah uh uh. Uh, for the uh, we, how we see our uh, festival in in upcoming years, of course, like we really hope that this situation gets better as soon as possible, and especially that uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Chongli, uh, you uh, mm. have uh, came to our uh, festival, mm. come to our festival, and you you could see like uh, the how people mm. are very into uh, social interaction. Mm -hmm. And even uh, in many uh, uh, in uh, many uh, cases that, uh, uh, for example, uh, some people already watch the movie, but they still come to the place uh, to mm -hmm. hang out with other uh, a filmmaker or other audience to uh, to uh, do networking and to mm -hmm. uh, have a new friends and so on. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, and this we it's it's uh, we still don't know if uh, we can replace it with uh, 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 online interaction or not. But yeah. like, uh, we really want the situation get better and soon as best possible, and we can mm. meet people uh, directly mm. and hanging out and laugh together mm. and have a joke together. Yeah, and smoke and drink together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we really uh, hope that. And uh, for until today, the micro cinema in Jogja, uh, mm. uh, they are still in uh, close. And especially mm. the Indonesian, uh, the Jogja government yesterday just uh, published that we extend uh, this, uh, how to say, okay. like a semi lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, until the end of July, and we uh, don't know if they're gonna extend again to the uh, 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 next month uh, and a few more, a uh, few mm -hmm. months uh, later. Uh, we never know, but until today, the mic micro cinema are still close here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for the information from Indonesia. Yeah, maybe and uh, any few words. Yeah, Tidy, please. Uh, in Myanmar, it's quite interesting. Like uh, we have. Uh, um, the big gacha of going to the big cinema and we have like um, still like a lot of like stand on cinema like uh, 1000 uh, 1300 people and the cinemas are packed so like uh, you, you see like uh, the people are still going a lot to like a big cinema mm -hmm. even for what then is also we are doing the the festival in the one of the old colonial like uh, old cinema which has been shut down for uh, five years and they only open during, uh, it's still owned my government, so they only give us to rent it during the festival. So this old, old cinema, which has been dead the whole year, and every year in September, we give it a life again with a lot, a lot of filmmakers coming and then running the festival for one week every year. Mm -hmm. and the whole year is like shutting down, the, the whole cinema is. Oh. So like the our cinema is around like 400 people can sit in and then mm -hmm. like, a lot of people like uh, come like most of the, some of the time it can be like house full with like the 400 audience yeah. uh, during the festival and a lot mm. of uh, beautiful balcony people meet drinks and talk mm. so it's very lively mm. atmosphere very unique uh, the festival and mm. the big cinema is together like people mm. remember it together so mm. uh, of course we want to keep it uh, the cinema culture and then uh, this atmosphere uh, mm. is very unique so like mm. uh, and of course, the younger generation are like very used to with the digital screens and like laptops and smartphones. So that's also it shouldn't be. A, we we also want to keep this also somehow. Maybe a lot of uh, next year and or like uh, in future also we'll keep a lot of discussion and like panel 
will be on online and we will keep this online activities also for the future also i think it's a good opportunity for mm. for us also yeah I, i hope i can visit your festival in yes. any coming yes. future yes. <laughs> <laughs> to feel the atmosphere in thailand and also myanmar i visited sunshine before but not during the festival time or i, I can't remember but yeah in, in the film archive <laughs> but they have some screening in the in the theater yeah so I, i wish i can visit all, you all again <laughs> all right so yeah and anyone would like to add any final words before we close grab the chance <laughs> oh but we have a few questions coming in though like uh like melvin melvin is actually asking if if we are hosting a mini screening do we need to pay apply also do we need to apply for a license to broadcast any video or film anyone knows about this and can answer with which which country is this in oh okay it depends on the countries right uh, okay maybe you can speak from your country perspective if you are screening and broadcasting your film from your countries are you do you need to pay for that license or apply for the license Oh, so this is like doing a mini screening online, right? I I suppose yeah, I believe it's online. About online. Okay, mm. so I think the reality is that um, films cost money. That's to make. So um, filmmakers need to recoup the money. So mm. therefore, um, what they do is they either will charge per screening rate, mm. uh, maybe by by time or by library or, or how it's. So mm. if you want to do a screening, obviously, um, if you're running and you're collecting money, then it will be important to ensure the money also goes back to the filmmaker because the last thing you want is you do a screenings and then the filmmaker gets nothing and then the filmmaker has come make new films and then you have nothing for the next screening. Mm. So, um, but in, in short, um, it all depends on the filmmaker, but it's also some circumstances are unusual they may say okay they can wave it off this is a community thing or if it's a fundraising yeah. benefit they can donate that fees and then do it for the beneficiaries but yeah for licenses it's also i think on online is really gray now no 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 government really knows how to manage this i mean the singapore government has actually started to um put rating on films okay. or mm. tv shows that screen online mm. and it follows the same so there was also talk about censoring oh no sorry not censoring um um if you're putting something on youtube you have to get it um approved approve, then you get the oh. rating so so you oh. get P, pg uh, wow. and so but mm. we have not seen it being enforced because i think it's going to be really hard yeah mm. Mm. I understand. So thank you for the question and answers. Uh, I, I I'm not sure about these questions. Uh, Akbar, I think it's from Aceh Film Festival. He asked, "How oh, about yeah, Sevon Sevon screening in Georgia?" But I I'm not sure what is this question about. Anyone would like to answer? Like, how about Sevon screening in Georgia? Oh, Maybe yeah. Anita. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Sevon screening is one of a uh, 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 film exhibition in in oh. Georgia. Uh, mm. from uh, Indonesian Institute of the Art, Yogyakarta, mm. Uh, mm. my uh, previous school. Uh, I still haven't uh, heard uh, any news about it, if they gonna go online or not. Mm. Mm. But uh, I know exactly that they are preparing because I know uh, some student who organize, mm. organize it. So okay. that's so far that I can share. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you, Anita, and thank you, Akbar from Aceh Film Festival. And uh, yeah, anyone say any anything to end? And <laughs> I I really uh, would like to thank everyone on board. Uh, I believe everyone had been holding your breath, holding your pee, wanting to go to the toilet, for instance, for so long. Yeah, I I really very I'm very thankful to have. Uh, five of you on board and share so much about your festival about how you see your audience and how you see your audience uh, your your festival will be and kind of coming coming up soon so for all our audience out there so if you are really wanting to join the festival of these panelists uh, please feel free to uh, jot down this information so that you are aware of the dates uh, the fastest soonest one will be c shots on the august 25th 30th 
And KKIFF, 11 to 15 September. Uh, Watan in Myanmar, 10 October. Please remember the date. And <laughs> FFD, early December. And uh, Thai Short Film and Video Festival in mid-December. So they are very vibrant film festivals and they are very beautiful people to, I mean, beautiful, um, not, not literary, but they are very nice people to, to, to interact with. Uh, please uh, w watch out and uh, check out their festivals and watch their films. And for our audience out there, please uh, also drop your feedback to us so that we can improve our webinar in the future. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Like you can either use this uh, QR code or this uh, link, bit.do slash online FF. It's actually referring to our webinar title, Online Film Festival. Bit.do bit slash online FF. Okay, so you can scan it out. Maybe any any final words from you while waiting for our, our audience to respond? <laughs> so that we can peacefully go and pee after this. <laughs> I, I, I have one thing to add. Um, one of the yeah. things that we discussed very quickly is everyone is missing the interaction and then the audience yeah. post idea that they want the networking session. So mm. one of the idea that we Jay came out with um, was to have a permanent Zoom room yeah. for the filmmakers to hang out the whole day. We, we are we will try to see how long it can last, but mm. anyone can go in yeah. during the festival period mm. and then chat with anybody. Like a, oh yeah, true. They like can well, they can go in. Oh yeah. So this virtual room will be there, like in a link. So any audience or filmmakers who are going for C shots with a the link, they can just drop in anytime they would like to. That, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that, so that'd be great. Uh, Tongli can can just go in, have his own coffee, and wait for someone to come in to chat with him. Yeah, while waiting for to watch another film or for yeah. instance. Yeah. Oh, well, great, well, great well, idea. Yeah. <laughs> great ideas. We, we maybe can learn from this. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think uh, C-Shot got sponsored from Zoom. So they have this privilege to do so. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a discounted rate for non-profit. It's not sponsored, uh, but yeah. I see. Okay, so if you are considering to do that, you can ask Nicholas on how maybe you can apply for discounted rate for your festival to have this kind of uh, interaction sessions <laughs> for your filmmakers. We can do it at Google Meet. So just leave one computer. Mm. Somebody just has to host the meeting permanently and oh, people yeah. can just drop in and out. Mm -hmm. for, for your information, we are trying to different platform for different webinar. As I know, uh, Google Meet will be free until September, so sometime mid-September or so. So after mid-September, I believe they were starting to charge. Um, so yeah, we have to keep on exploring and uh, find a way out for this. Because Mini Film Festival is actually a self-funded, um, a very small budget festival. We, we pay the money ourselves from the students, from the lecturers. So we don't really have any... Uh, sponsorship from Finas or anyone, you know. So yeah, I purposely mentioned the name Finas. So yeah, we, we hope we, we will be uh, someone who, who could sponsor us for this kind of uh, initiative in the future. So from our audience, thank you. And uh, from all our panelists, we really thanks a lot. Uh, I will do some uh, housekeeping over here. Uh, for our next webinar, it will be the third webinar. Uh, the webinar will be about audio and sound design for film uh, with a question, the forgotten siblings. Because at least in Malaysia, most of the time we hear from a lot of filmmakers out there or even editors especially, they will say audio and sound design and sound designer. They will say audio and sound design are often neglected in film. They will always say, fix it in the post. So is this a way out? Or should we solve it? at the be very beginning, ideally it should be. So we had invited five panelists, uh, which is a very big name, I would, I would say. We have sound designers, two sound designers, Mosin and Megat, and uh, one editor, Safwan, who was our former student, and uh, one audio recordist, uh, means someone who would record the sound on the field when the film is being shot. So Azhar, and the final one, Umi, is actually a up and coming film director. Okay, so it will be two weeks from now, July 14, 8.30. So follow our social media for more updates. And uh, yeah, this will be our social media. Please uh, scan or just find on your Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to look for us. 
Okay, so with this, I would like to say thank you to everyone. Thanks to uh, Nicholas, uh, thanks to Anita, thanks to Tidy, thanks to Jude, and thanks to Sunshine. <laughs> thanks a lot to all of you. Yeah, thank you for organizing this, Chongli. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, <laughs> yeah, had some sleepless yeah. night before yeah. this. <laughs> well, Chongli, and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jude. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this, not, is, yeah, sorry. Not to forget the the little uh very important quiet person who's yeah, at the corner who's been here staring at <laughs> us. <laughs> thank you so exactly. much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, thanks exactly. a lot, that guy, to help me to do the streaming to so, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Tidy. Thank you, Sunshine. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, thank Anita you. and Jude. Yeah. Uh, Bye, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, you too, audience. Thank you, thank bye you bye. for watching. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, Lau. Do stop the streaming. Okay.